Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. <laughs> Alright. Um. Can we leave it? Season two. First All right, episode. Guys. Welcome back to another episode of Heavenly Bond. We're, guys, we're back. We're excited. We're here on season two. This is such, such an amazing feeling. Like, I feel so happy that we're here finally in our new studio. Yes. In our new setup. What do you guys think about our new studio? This is literally different. It looks amazing. It feels amazing. It feels um, awesome in here. And we're just so beyond excited to be back. And we have a very powerful message, just like us, just talking about our thoughts on Halloween. I hope you guys are ready. Get your Bibles out, get your notebooks out, because this is going to be, you know, controversial for some people. And we just have to share it, because Halloween is going to be in two days after this video goes live. Yeah, Halloween is going to be in two days, and um, we're just So if you're thinking about it... Yeah, we're going to bring you guys some truth. I feel like a lot of Christians have to be... um, The the light has to be shed on this, you know... Um, we can't we can't be complacent, we can't be naive. We have to be able to be spiritually in defense and mm. be able to be aware of what's going on in the spiritual realm. You know, we're no longer gonna be complacent Christians, okay? This podcast is to encourage us and build us to not be complacent Christians. Amen. Not Sundays Christians. We're living this out every single day. It's a lifestyle. Yes. You know, so we have to be living according to that. So we're gonna bring you guys the word. I know. And I wanna say before we get guys. into the word though, because um, I want to dive right right into it, yeah. but if you guys noticed, season two is now live Amen. on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, so you guys can just listen to us. We've been listening to your, your requests, okay? We listen to you guys, okay? And now, and now we're delivering. We're so. delivering, and even like the set, like we took notes from what you guys said about the first season, uh-huh. so we took notes on that. Like, Yeah, the white was, was blinding some of y'all, and listen... <laughs> We we learned it from y'all, so thank you for. The white was blinding. It was blinding. So the constructive criticism is is criticizing. All right, <laughs> and like it just goes to show that we actually care about what you guys have to say. Amen. Like we take it seriously, and we read your comments, and we read your messages, and we read everything. We're not able to get back to all of you guys, but just know that we are seeing you guys, and we are planning to do something in the future where we can be more involved in the one on one talking. Yes, because it is difficult to get back to every single one, but just know that we are seeing you and we hear you and we're just so beyond excited for season two and like this whole time that we were away we were just like dang like we miss like connecting with you guys yeah. like we miss posting every single week like we love you guys so much yeah like, we were like scared like are we gonna be out for too long like yeah it's a little too long like but you know the lord knew what he was doing so yes like so there's so many things happening that you guys are gonna be involved that we're gonna mm-hmm. share later on just be ready because even in this two week gap that we took oh my off goodness. so much happened you guys oh my goodness like god is moving in an amazing mighty way and we just cannot wait to share with you guys yes. like Yes, 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 I yes. cannot believe it. I, can, I mean, I can share what I'm doing. Of course. Okay, so I actually got invited to speak at the Sisterhood Conference from my church. It is like pretty big. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like seven campuses going to come together to worship together and have a speaker. And I'm going to be part of a Your panel, a panel which is so crazy. Huge, bro. It's so amazing. And I think we're going to post this a few days before. So if you live in... Uh, New Jersey, New York, and you're willing to drive to Pennsylvania to the Lehigh Valley, um, buy your tickets. Yeah, buy your tickets. We'll and definitely like, come, leave the um join. the information down below in, in the description. Yes, so you know the address and where it's at the time and all that stuff, extra stuff. I'm pretty sure you're gonna be uh, posting it on your social media as well. I'm gonna be posting on social media, but just pray for me, you guys, because it's gonna be my first time ever speaking. Not first time ever, second time speaking in a large audience. Mm-hmm. The first time was because of my job, but. It's going to be so amazing, and I just cannot wait to see, like, what Dolo's going to do, but... Like, that's huge. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited, And that's just, like, a glimpse of what God is doing. Amen. That is, like, a glimpse, and, like, the Lord is doing so much in this season. So much more. Like, we can't wait to share with you guys. But, do you want to dive in? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. I I I love love you, Jesus. Jesus. (laughs) Okay, so let's talk about Halloween, because there's so much we can talk about. So, I guess we can just start by saying, like... When we first started our journey with the Lord, we were celebrating Halloween. Yeah. I mean... Well, not me. Just keeping it real. Not me. Because you got to understand, like, I started going to a Pentecostal church. 
So Imanon, even but before, you still straight did, away and you were yeah, but that in the little keyword, parties. Keyword. What's the keyword right there? Straight away. Exactly. I was a straight dog, okay? I was straight away. <laughs> straight dog. I was straight away. I wasn't walking with the Lord. But when I was walking with the Lord, obviously mm-hmm. when I was walking with the Lord, like I was going to parties and stuff like that, Halloween, just just the, the demonic presence in that day is just so wicked. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, but... Understanding that from a Pentecostal church, like they're very, very, you know, harsh on these things, and they very should much be, against it, and very much against it because they should be, and a lot of people aren't so sensitive to the spirit when these things are happening. Like people think, and that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of Christians are so naive because they're not diving into the word. Like putting my kids in a costume, like it's okay when you know John Ramirez. If you don't know John Ramirez, do your homework on John Definitely. Ramirez. He was a warlock. He was a known satanist. He was in high rankings. Yeah. And he speaks about every time you put these little costumes on your kids, you're opening up doors for the devil to come and attack them because you're partaking in the celebration of this demonic thing. Mm. You're, you know, it's like an offering to the devil. You know, and to LaVey, the, the, the founder of the satanic church, Satan he says... Church. I, I thank Christian parents for letting their kids worship this the devil, worship Satan at least one day of the year. We don't see we don't see Satan is coming on Good Fridays to church. There, we don't see them on Easter. Easter. You know, oh let's go, let's go to church and celebrate the, the uh, Jesus, resurrection. The resurrection. They don't do that. So why are we partaking in this satanic ritual and this demonic thing? such as Halloween, and yeah. it is so wrong, it is so wrong, and it's wicked, and these people who are actively in the satanic uh, 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 field where they they're are doing witches, this, they're witches they're warlocks. and warlocks, they're actually actively doing these things, are telling you where it comes from, where it stems from, the root of, of it, and Christians want to be naive. You know, naive, oh, I'm going I'm to dress my kid as Noah, or, you know, thinking it's cool, like a little lion and all these things. Thinking An angel. An angel thinking that it's okay because of the outward appearance, but the root of you partaking in these things, it's demonic. It's wrong. And your kids are, you're hindering them from potentially getting demonically attacked. Now they're seven, eight years old, questioning their, their gender, thinking about things mm. that they shouldn't be thinking about. You know what I mean? And it's because you opened up that door since little. So parents, people, us, Christians. Let's not partake in these things. And we're going to dive in deeper on what it says in the Word of God about these things. Amen. But we need to be firm. We need to be firm. We need to be bold. Because if we're going to be the separation, if we're going to be set apart. The salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. We have to take those lucrative steps to not be a part of the world. That's so good. And I have to say, like, I just hear people saying, like, you guys are making a big deal out of it. Halloween is fun. Like, we, I'm not going to parties, for example. I'm just going to go, like, dress up with my friends and, like, have, like, a fun gathering at home. Or, oh, I'm just going to take my kids to trick-or-treat. What is wrong with trick-or-treating? I can hear people saying that already. Right. And I must say, like, it is not about what is wrong with trick-or-treating or I'm not doing it in a bad way. I'm not a witch, so, like, that's not apply to me. It's not about that, you guys. It's just the, the whole day is satanic. Like, right. you have to understand in the spiritual realm, that whole day is a whole sacrifice. People are actually doing things in their home. They're waiting the whole year right. for this day. So people can go out and you can knock on doors and you don't know who you're knocking on. Like, you don't know who is stranger you're getting candy from. Right. It is something that the devil is so strategic about making something bad look good and seem good. Amen. And he's so good at deceiving us. But you have to be aware that this day is truly satanic. And people that are partaking in it, witches that actually know right. the spiritual realm, and they're serious about it, they understand the power that that they hold. Amen. It's like you don't know what these people are doing. Like you said, you don't know whose door you're knocking into. You don't know if it's a whole witch, a whole warlock praying over these candy. You know what I mean? Putting witches and, and spells and putting so many wrong things into these candies and then giving it to the kids. You know what I mean? And you don't know what can stem from it. Exactly. You don't know what can happen. And, and so And we see so many news of like people going to hospitals because they swallowed a needle or they right. like like crazy things like blades. Like they are yes. literally putting this in the in the chocolate. Literally Google this guys. Don't like just take what we say. Yeah. Actually do your research about it. Um they open the candies, mm-hmm. they close it with like flat irons, making it seem like it's sealed. Uh-huh. They are so strategic about harming others. And just the thought of you getting a candy or getting something from a stranger, that alone is scary. Amen. But there's so much more. And if we go to the stores, if we go to um people decorating their homes, what are they decorating? It's Amen. not harvest. It's not fall. It's not pumpkins. It's ghost. It is uh, it's zombies. Like, yes, you're like celebrating death. It's death. It's skeletons. Like you are literally celebrating death. Amen. And 
in the Bible, I'm going to talk about this real quick. Um, in and Deuteronomy. But before, before you talk about that. Yeah. Actually, I, I yeah, I'm going to talk about it in that verse. After that verse. Well, I'm, this, this, is a different, this is a different verse because we thought about the same verse, but yeah. it's a different verse. Yeah. So this one is De- Deuteronomy um, chapter 18, verse 10 to 12. Now, no one among you is to sacrifice his son or daughters in the fire. Practice divination. Tell fortunes. What people do? Go to the fortune teller or let's play. What's it called that game? That is like the, the Ouija board. The Ouija board. Let's like do like be a witch. That's what is done Come in that it. day. Um, interpret omens. Practice sorcery. Cast spells. Consult a medium or a spirit. Inquire of the dead. Everyone who does this acts is detestable to the Lord. Detestable. Because what you're doing is you're tapping into the spiritual realm in the wrong in a joking angle. in a joking way yes you're doing it in the wrong angle you're mm. doing it out of your will to gain something from it that is outside of god's will that's why god sees it as his testimonies because you're playing god mm. you know what i mean you're going against the laws of the spirit to go with your needs your wants and you're doing what you want to do and manipulating things right in your hands when it's not meant for us to manipulate but us to reside in god to do it according to his will and his way that's so good so this is why it is wrong because you're manipulating things in the spiritual realm and so when christians like you saying like they think it's okay i'm just dressing up i'm just getting candy bro these are the shallow christians i'm telling you this if you're watching this and you're thinking it's okay and stuff like that listen I'd rather bring you the truth, and I'm not condemning you because none of us are condemned. It was a point where, you know what I mean, we thought it was okay, and right. we thought it was cool, and, you know, the truth was brought to us, and it set us free. Exactly. So, understand is that the truth is being brought to you, and if you, after hearing this truth, and think, it's okay, it's fine, it's no problem, you know, you're lacking discernment, and you're a very shallow Christian to think that you can celebrate a demonic holiday as the Halloween, and think it's okay to just, you know, do these things and partake into such a ritualistic day. Exactly. You're a very shallow Christian. You need more revelation of the Word of God. You need to seek the Lord more intimately. If you have no conviction about going out and dressing up a certain way, and you know promoting just scaring and death and all these things that just stem from nothing but wickedness and you're a christian saying it's okay you have a problem you have a problem with your relationship with god you don't have a relationship with god you have a relationship with yourself because when it's convenient to you you want to see god when your family member is sick you want to see god and say lord uh, praise Please god praise jesus heal them heal them do this but when it comes to you actively walking this out and letting things go and putting your old self down and bringing up your new self born again christian you don't want to do it because mm-hmm. it's convenient to you mm-hmm. you know what i mean and that's shallow christian that's like shallow christianity and it's not going to lead you nowhere and a lot of people that think that this is cool that this is okay i promise you they're dealing with bondage they're in strongholds they're dealing with a lot of things, and I'm not saying it's wrong with dealing with these things, but I promise you, God can set you free. But the reason why you're in bondage is because you're actively willingly, willingly walking in that, in bondage. You know what I mean? By partaking to these things. By thinking like scary movies is no problem. It's fine. It's okay. Mm-hmm. By opening those doors, the Bible says that the eyes are the windows to the soul. For, for you to comfortably sit there and watch a scary movie thinking it's okay, what kind of shallow Christian are you? And there is so many movies right now. There's so many marathons. I see it on Netflix, Hulu, all the streaming platforms. The first thing you see when you click on the app is marathons, scary movies. Like, and they just put it in your face. They're just trying to make you feel like, oh, it's part of the holiday. But it is truly making you open portals in your home, Amen. in your spirit, for the enemy to attack your life. And you know what? Maybe you're not going to feel it that day. You're not. You can have fun. You went partying. Or maybe you are a family and you're dressing up all your kids and you guys are like the superheroes or like whatever. And you feel like, oh my gosh, it's so harmless. But for God, it's not a joke. Amen. The spiritual is not a joke. And for fools, they think that spiritual things is dumb. Yeah, it's foolish to men. It's foolish to men. But when we're walking in the spirit, we're able to discern. And I'm. we're not sitting here like, oh, you know, condemning you if you celebrate Halloween or whatever. We're just saying, bring it to God. You know what I'm saying? Bring it to God. And the Bible has so much to say about this. Yes. It's not our opinion. It's not what we think. It is the Bible talking about this. In 2 Corinthians, another scripture for you, chapter 6, verse 14. Don't, don't become partners with those who do not believe. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? What fellowship does light have with darkness? What agreement does Christ have with I don't know how to say this word, uh, Belial, or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? He's saying here, what association 
Amen. do we have with the darkness? What association do we have in partaking with these things? We are not from that world. We're not from this world. Amen. So us doing the things of the devil in a harm, harmless way, Quote it is unquote. still participating in it. And it's foolish for us to think that it is just a day. It is just for fun. When the spiritual realm is not a joke, it is not just a day. Right. It is actually true and it's living and it's active. And we are able to open portals so easily by doing little things that may seem like harmless in the moment, but we're going to feel it later on. Like it says, what does darkness have with, what does light have fellowship with darkness? That whole day is darkness. There's nothing good about that day whatsoever. Everything is scary, death, demonic, witchcraft, uh, you know, all of these things that crystals and divination and everything that goes yeah, against sorcery. God. So if light cannot have fellowship with darkness, why are we incorporating it together? Why mm -hmm. are you a Christian that is supposed to be the light of the world? Why are you a Christian that's supposed to bring light into darkness, partaking with darkness? What does that have? What, what, no what kind of fellowship? It's like oil and water. There's no fellowship. Mix. It does not mix. So for you to think that you're able to mix it because it's okay is you, number one, bringing down your morals into the world standards and literally bringing down yourself as a Christian thinking that it's fine. You know what I mean? It's fine for me to just numb down and think it's okay for one day as a yeah. Christian knowing that this stems from wickedness. You know what I mean? Like when, when people that are actively literally religiously practicing satanism and say that this is wrong and you able to hear that and mm -hmm. not think mm, maybe they're right because they're doing it and it's like these people are putting it in our faces knowing that a lot of christians are so naive to not even think otherwise it's just like wow how fooled are we the bible even says is that you know even the elect will be deceived you know what i mean the bible says that fools despise wisdom yeah. and so when wisdom is given to you what are you going to do about it? Are you going to be stubborn? Are you going to be a fool and look the other way? Or are you going to actually take the wisdom of God and, you know, imply it in your life? I think it's just a matter of obedience. Amen. It's truly a matter of obedience. It's like, if you feel uncomfortable, if you actually do love this holiday, and you're like, dang, like, holiday is my favorite holiday. Like, I love it. I love dressing up. I love hanging out with my friends. I love partying or whatever it is. I would really challenge you to check yourself and, and check your motive behind it. Are you really loving this because you are in your flesh? Like, like, is it why is it so difficult for you to give it up? Aside from like hearing all the evidence, aside from hearing all the testimonies, why is it so difficult for you to give it up? It's just a plain old thing of obedience. You're just not being obedient to God. And um, another scripture here is in Ephesians 5, verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments. Mm. For God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, do not become their partners. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of goodness, righteousness, and truth. Testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. <laughs> Are you hearing this? That's so good. We're not to participate in the darkness. We're to expose it. We're to we are to it. stand our ground and say, no, Lord, this day I'm actually going to gear up. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ever knock on my door. I'm going to share the gospel with them. Amen. Because that's another thing. Us Christians believe, okay, you know what? I'm not going to participate in it. So I'm just going to stay comfortable in my home. I'm going to turn off the light outside. <laughs> and whoever comes to my house, I'm not going to, I'm not going to answer the door because I'm not participating in it. No. We have to rise up. Use that day to evangelize. People are outside of their house. What an amazing opportunity to evangelize and spread the good news. We have to be hungry to do things of God. And we have to be hungry to stand up for what is right. And we have to stand up for, for the gospel and defend it. We, we're not to participate in the darkness. That's not what we're not supposed to do. Right. So there's so much that goes into Halloween that is just really mind-blowing to me. How... Some people truly believe, like... No, like, it's just, like, it's okay. And listen, like, I want you guys to really, really, really check yourselves. And um, if you are, you know, if you had questions about it, I hope this is an answer to you. But, you know, if you're still feeling the desires to be able to partake in something, like, so wicked, it's, it's truly not stemming from God at mm. all. You know what I mean? Like, really open up, you know, a lot of people... I feel like a lot of people are just spiritually blind. 
you yeah. know, to be able to really see what it is. Because in that day as well, you know, I think I think the 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 selling of chickens is like so high that day. I've seen a research about it, and like animals, it's like really really high. I think the Halloween is also one of those days where you know it's like one of the uh 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 one of those days that a lot of children also get kidnapped. Like oh, the numbers yeah, skyrocket. Too. A lot of murders happen. You know, you a lot of people get away. You always see on social media like young people dying yeah. in parties getting sh- like shoot like last season last halloween like there was a college party and like two kids yeah uh, they got murdered in the party because of like this person that hated them like it's crazy and, and, and it's because you gotta understand that these witches and warlocks there you gotta you, you know it's crazy like these witches and warlocks are more they strategize and they are more organized organized than even christians these people have a month prior preparing to this they are literally doing rituals staying up until five 10 hours straight not sleeping mm-hmm. you know what i mean doing so much for this day to just consume because they know that a lot of doors are going to be open a lot of people are going to be willing to receive what it is that yes. they're putting out these people are astral projecting and yes. just putting so much demonic things happening that day. that's why a lot of killing happens a lot of craziness happens and it's because these witches and it's, warlocks have months preparing it's not because a, a they speak. know it's at its peak because these warlocks know that this day is the day that even Christians are going to be participating. No, that this Christians, is the only day that we know that the doors are going to be open, so let's attack. Exactly. Like, Christians themselves, like, we low-key are preparing ourselves too. We're watching scary movies. We're going to haunted houses. Come on. Like, come on now. Who's going to... If you're a Christian, you're going to haunted house. Like, what are you... Are you good? Like... I'm telling like, you. And, like, and, it's just so in your face. Like, it is not godly at all. And you're participating in it. You're preparing your soul for the 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 witches to really impart traps to keep you yes. in loops. Yes, like and and I promise you, I know there's people watching this. Like haunted house. Like is yeah. that like it's like the numbness, the numbness that comes down to it is like how numb are you to be able to partake in darkness? What are you even doing in a haunted house? It's cool, me and my friend, like why you know what i'm saying like why are you even partaking in that and you want to be used by god mightly mm. you want to be be sent out to the nations mm. but while witches and warlocks are planning to this day to really deceive and put witches and spells on people mm-hmm. what you're doing is like you said watching scary movies yeah. you're laying in your couch you're looking for costumes yes. to, to 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 dress up and match with your whole family while these people are doing blood sacrifices you're over here what being naive being 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 in the back ends when we need to be in the front ends you know what i'm saying we need to be prayed up we need to be ready because we understand that a lot of spiritual things are partaking in this day yes so how are we preparing ourselves that's so good and we can definitely get into that because on halloween i actually have a bible study in my home on halloween day i'm hosting a bible study in my home we're not playing about that like there's there's no game like we're not playing here like oh just like like just just tapping on to the world, just tapping on to things. Like, no, if you're going to be fooling for the Lord, you're going to be fooling for the Lord. You're not going to be just playing with God. And we yes. have to be equipped as Christians. We have to be equipped about the spiritual realm because how, how people perish because of lack of knowledge. Yes. He says it like, my children perish because of lack of knowledge. If you're not willing <clears throat> to learn about the spiritual realm, if you're not willing to armor up to be able to fight against the enemy you're not gonna be able to be successful yes you won't be able to be filled with the spirit to cast out and rebuke the enemy's lies in your life so we have to come together and be bold about hosting bible studies about evangelizing that day literally be different people are gonna be like oh my gosh whatever they're gonna criticize you they're gonna persecute you okay persecute me Amen. persecute me persecute like me, i don't please. care like you should have that attitude like i'm all in for god even if people are gonna make fun of me even if i look like the weird friend that's not going to the parties even if i'm staying at home and i'm not um going out and doing things that people are doing yes. i'm different and we that's have to it. have that attitude we have to walk that out heavy on the i'm different because like what are you gaining what are you honestly ask yourself what are you gaining from doing these things what are you gaining from partaking in any of this yeah. a, a, a momentary moment of just having fun of candy of just like feeling good for that moment that little satisfaction like what are you really gaining from it you're literally delaying your calling and Mm. i promise you you people that generally want to be used by god are doing nothing to be used by god straightforward you say you want to be a prayer word but you don't even actively want to pray you don't actively want to seek the lord you generally don't want to die to your flesh Mm. you know and it stems from the wickedness the things that you let that uh, uh, pass by the things that you yeah. just let be you know mm-hmm. what i mean and it's because of 
the complacency. You know what I mean? And as young people, as young people, bro, like a lot of us, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of us, you know, our parents are not Christians. Like we didn't, we didn't grow up in, in, in Christian homes. Maybe you did, but I know a lot of people that reach out like me, my parents are always battling and doing this, doing that. And it's like, they're not Christians. They don't even like that. I'm even a Christian stuff like that. And it's like, if you're that only person in your family, that's going to be able to bring the gospel to your mm -hmm. family. Why are you not actively more on fire to walk? according to the Lord? Why are you not so fired up to be so obedient to the word of God and to the voice of God to be able to not only set yourself free from eternal damnation, but for your family as well? You can bring wow. them hope. You can bring them life. And the complacency of thinking that because nobody's keeping me accountable, because my parents are not Christian, they're not telling me this. Because you know, I didn't grow up this they're, way. They're gonna, yeah, because I didn't grow up this way, then I'm going to just be able to do this and, you know, live this, this cycle of one foot in and one foot out. The Bible says he will spit you out of his mouth if you're lukewarm. This is lukewarmness. This is lukewarmness. And what bothers me the most is like a lot of these people on social media are not talking about it. No. They feel like it's okay. They feel like it's okay to celebrate Halloween. It feels like it's okay to talk however you want, live however you want, and just live such a complacent lifestyle as a Christian. That's not what we do. That's not how we see the move of God. No. If we're one foot in and one foot out, we will never see God move. We will never see that move. Because we never see revival. We will never see revival. And it is because we have to understand that the things that our flesh wants to do, we have to deny it. We have to constantly deny it. And, 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 and these desires that we have that don't stem from God, we have to deny these desires. 100%. We have to be able to say no. We have to be able to be like, man, I would love to go out with you guys and be able to have the bonus to be like, but no, I'd rather stay home. I'd rather read my Bible. I'd rather pray. Like, that's not, that's not corny. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, don't like feel like that's feel corny. Like that is corny. Like, you like being different. You're not participating in things like, oh, like I'm gonna be that person. I'm gonna be that friend. Like, it's not corny, like, like at all. Like, why? Why do you feel ashamed to be able to say no? I'm gonna stay home and read my Bible. Like, like, are you looking for approval of man or are you looking for the approval of God? Like, mm. what do I care what people say if they think I'm corny because I'm praying, bro? I'm praying to God. How is exactly. that corny? What kind of devil do you have that thinks that that's corny? Like, <laughs> you need Jesus, bro. You know what I mean? Let me be the encourager to tell you, you should be praying too. Clearly, if you think yes. that's bad, if you think that's corny, maybe you need that. So it's like, my eyes are stuck in the heavenly realm, in the heavenly things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, as much as we're physical, we're also spiritual beings. That's a lot of people want to say, oh, I sense bad energy. I sense this. I sense it. every time. I sense bad I vibes. Bad vibes. Or, you know, some people, even when we walk in, like, oh, like, I can sense, like, a compliment you get all the time. Like, your home is so warming. Like, I feel like your home makes me feel so cozy, so comfortable. That's one of the comments you get all the time in your home. Yeah. And it's because the Holy Spirit resides in here, bro. Amen. There's homes that you can walk into and, and you, you feel, feel uncomfortable. It. You feel like there's tension. Why? Because you don't even got to be Christian. You just know. That's why we call it bad vibes, bad energy. No. It's your spirit discerning the atmosphere because yes. we're spiritual beings. You know what I mean? So for Ooh. you to be able to understand that and now. you're not even a Christian, it's powerful. Mm. So even once you are a Christian and you're not even taking the hints that if you feel that that thing, you know that that atmosphere is not godly, you should be more precautious. Ooh. And understanding that Halloween stems from wickedness, why are you not questioning, man, this is not a good day. Exactly. I don't even feel good outside. There's death all around me. There's scary costumes all around me. There's people putting fear in you. That's so good. Why are people putting fear in you? Why are you so comfortable with being scared and being in fear? Yeah. And We're it's not meant so to live crazy, in fear. Though. No, honestly, I have to say this. Like, people... No, the enemy is so sneaky. The enemy is so sneaky about how he deceives. Because we were hanging out in my home with our friends. We were having a like, game night. And at the end of game night, we were, like, putting a movie on. And the first thing mm -hmm. that came up, like, Saw X. And I, when I was growing up, I loved the Saw, mm -hmm. like, movies. They're so wicked. But I used to really enjoy, like, scary movies. And um, they were like, oh, like, put it on or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, not nah. in my house. Like, nah. I was here. like, yeah. no. Like, you know, and it was so easy for me to be like, you know what? Like, people want to watch it. Let's just, like, put it on. But I knew for a fact that if I play that in my home, I'm inviting enemies and I'm yes. inviting demons to, to dwell in my home. Right. You have to be so careful because I slip, slip of the moment. I could have played that and it would have been like, okay, whatever. But the enemy puts little traps in your way to have his way in, not to have that. his way in your life. Yeah. Like not only that, like now you play that movie, the door was open. Where are those demons dwelling? 
mm. in your home because mm-hmm. that's where the doors open. Exactly. And a lot of people that were receptive over that movie can also receive because of uh, the eyes of the windows to the soul. But because you open that door in your home, everybody's else going to go home mm-hmm. and you're the one that's going to have to be dealing with that, with that uncomfortability in my home because I opened up that door. And you know what? The enemy can manifest himself, like the demons can manifest himself, not only by feeling uncomfortable because like you said, you can walk into a room and you can feel like, Wow, I feel so at peace here because right. the spirit of the God is dwelling in that. But if you don't feel that peace, what is dwelling? Amen. What is dwelling in that house? What is dwelling it's in not the house? spirit of God. I can tell you that for sure. But I, another way that you can feel the spirit shifting in your home is arguments. All Amen. of a sudden, all of a sudden, you're arguing with your spouse. All of a sudden, there's so much conflicts. The all division. of a sudden, there is no financial uh, um stability stability Amen. like things happen where like there's something that happened with your job like little things like that can come crumbling down because you're allowing the enemy to dwell in your home that's why it's so important for us to be really diligent when it comes to praying for our household anointing our household praying for the spirit of god to dwell and for the spirit of god i always pray this in my home for the spirit of god to rest on whoever is walking through the doors of my house Amen. Because that is what matters and like you have to be prayerful because the enemy is so sneaky and he can just like lurk in. It's like a little hole. It can he can make a little smidge mm-hmm. and then it comes growing and growing, keeps growing, keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger to where you're like, oh, snap. Like right. I noticed it, but literally weeks ago, months ago, it was small and you didn't notice it. Exactly. So it's just like being really proactive right. being proactive and being discernment and being tangible and being sensitive to the things of the spirit because that is what we should be walking in as christians yes 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 and halloween is all about the spiritual realm it's all, all about, about the it. enemy and even like uh that that guy from the satan church what's his name again oh john ramirez which no is... no no, from satan church oh Anta LeVay. yeah like can we not ignore that like this no, guy for real. Is the founder of Satan Church. The Satanic and he said, Church. The Satanic Church. I'm talking about like the, the whole star, the blood on the floor, people with capes, all the like the, the creepy things that you see in the movies. No, this is real life. Mm-hmm. They actually doing the sacrifice and these rituals. This man is saying that he's glad that Christian parents let their kids worship Satan at least one day. Out of the year. Out of the year. And you think that is a joke That's and a little joke. statement? You think that by you dressing up your family and like you going out and being cute, you think that nothing is happening in the spiritual realm? And he literally said it. Worship Satan. Worshiping is not just, you know, you singing, of, and, you're singing your hands. and raising your hands. Worshiping is partaking into it. Mm. Worshiping is stepping into it. You know, the the there was a I think it was the 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 wife, his wife, I think, she said it like now we're working into tapping into certain frequency in the music that even by you listening and making yourself pop to to the music and using using uh like a certain manipulation and what is that called when hypnotizing um, yes and that's a certain it puts you in a certain hypnosis state that mm-hmm. you're able to bob your head and worship so it's like now they're saying that we're able to make people worship just by listening because once they're listening, their mind wants to generally worship the song by moving, by actively bopping your head. You know what I mean? Like, Yo. it's ways that you can even walk into into a, a store and you're like bopping your head without even knowing. And you're like, what? Like, you don't even you know, know what what's I playing. You're just right actively now? doing that. You know that Disney movie that we watched growing up? It's like the three witches that like when you turn on a, uh-huh. a black candle, they come back out. Uh-huh. There is a scene in that movie that they are hypnotizing their parents because their parents all went out to a party and the kids like were trick-or-treating or whatever mm. and then the kids were like bro like we gotta get our parents like the witches are back uh-huh. and they were hypnotizing the, the parents with their songs Look so they that. were literally like made like they were literally like in a hypnosis day in the party uh-huh. and they were even walking out and the kids are like dad like help like the witches are back and they weren't able to receive like anything because they were like hypnotized by their song do you think that is coincidence? That is coincidence. And Disney's being one of the most demonic uh, industries. Uh, industries, really, out here is insane. Like, if you really don't think Disney's demonic and the subliminal message that they put into into the kids' minds we is insane. We can do insane. a whole video about that. We can that. do a whole video about just Disney alone and the founder of Disney itself. And how it's these targeted people support. for children. And it's yeah. so, like, disgusting. 
disgusting. Because the devil understands that when it stems from children, he's building up a generation. Mm. When you get to hit the children, now the children grow up with a certain mentality. Now that's the next generation. That's the people that's going to be our next presidents, our next senators, our next government officials. Our next pastors. Our next pastors. Our next evangelists. So it's like now when we hit him with the kids... Little by little, they grew up with this mentality. Now they're able to distort what it is that's from God. Oh so my goodness. So Disney, Disney is very, very demonic. But yes, you know. It's like literally the music. It just it, makes you like that. It, it, it hypnotizes you. It hypnotizes you. It blinds you. you from what is actually going on. Right. So it's not like you're going to go to Walmart and like cover your ears. Like that's not what I'm telling you. It's when you're actively participating into listening to these willfully. music willfully now you're able to receive what is being delivered exactly you're receiving what's being delivered and so this is what she said she said that now we're able to put people in a certain state that just by listening to it they're worshiping it because not you can just listen to it but when you're you know and generally vibing with the song now you're becoming one with this song yeah. and that is why it is demonic bro it is demonic things are not just what it is it is not just a coincidence my god is not a god of coincidence he knows why things happen things are set in order i'm telling you the devil is not just a coincidental devil either he's very strategic he understands how our minds work the devil doesn't know because he's a devil the devil knows because he is old he's been studying humans for years now mm. he's been seeing he bro he deceived our first human the first ever human yeah so if he's able to study humans from eve and adam and eve to now trust me he has a lot of knowledge and understanding, but we have the Holy Spirit. We're Amen. far above him Amen. because we have the Holy Spirit. We cannot be deceived. Mm, when I we, have a when scripture you, for you. When you have the Holy Spirit, there You're is going. no way you can be deceived. Mm -hmm. So don't be deceived thinking that you can be deceived if you have the Holy Spirit. You cannot be deceived when you have the Holy Spirit in you. Now, because you're actively walking in the Spirit... You're Go able ahead. to detest and you're able to discern what is right and what is wrong. But if you're walking one foot in and one foot out, you're actively pushing down and, and you're actively living for the world and sinning. How can you hear the Holy Spirit? So you can have the Holy Spirit, but it's activated in you. That's, that's, that's the thing because you got to understand the Holy Spirit is a gift. And God doesn't take away any gifts. When he gives you something, he does not take away the gift. That's why Satan is able to do what he does. That's why he has these gifts that God has given him. But... It is a way to activate them. It's like playing piano. If you play piano for, for, for the first few months, you know everything. And it's like you stop playing it for a long time. You forget the chords. You forget how to play. It's like you forget it because you haven't actively been pursuing it or actively been doing it. So how can you be on fire? How can you, you know, be walking in the spirit if you're constantly pushing your spirit down? And I want to say, um, when you were talking about that, the first verse that came to my mind was Romans 8.38. Because... It is so amazing. Like, I want you guys to, if you're starting your faith and you feel like a little afraid, don't be afraid, okay? Don't be afraid of demons. We're don't more be than conquerors in Christ. We already won the battle. We're fighting from a place of, of victory. Of victory. Like, so there's no reason for you to be afraid because we already won and we have authority over the, the demons and angels, everything. Like, we are mm -hmm. made in the likeness of God and we have so much power to cast out, to rebuke, to make new Yes, to yes, make, yes. to do greater works than Jesus on this earth. Amen. Like God is so good. And like, I want you guys to remember that. Like when you're walking out, don't walk like you're like scared or like whatever. No, walk in confidence. Put your chest up. Put your shoulders back. Literally be confident that we are walking with Christ, who is the winner. And Romans 8.38, I love this verse. And like, if this is the first time you're hearing it or like the million time you're hearing it, I want you to remember it because this is so amazing. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing. Nothing can separate us. You understand us from the that? Like I want you to understand and like, read it back. Like nothing can separate us from the love of God. God is guarding us. We're his children. He loves us. But we have to walk in authority and walk in that confidence that we are fighting for a place of victory and not defeat. And not defeat. Amen. Um, I love that verse. St stemming back to that, you know, we're fighting for a place of victory and not defeat. So that means that we've already won. It's already played out. Mm -hmm. It's already played out. So don't be afraid of thinking, you know, all these things that is demonic. You know what I mean? God did not come to condemn the world, to free them. Amen. So in Genesis 1, 26, 28 says this. I want you to listen closely. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air mm. and over the cattle and over the, all the earth 
and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Key word, dominion. Mm. We have dominion. Let us make man in our likeness. We are made in the likeness of God. And God has That's given powerful. us dominion over everything over the earth. This is why there's certain people that can tap into certain things. Like these witches and these and these warlocks can do certain things with the influence of demons. Because they're telling them how to do it. Demons cannot do it. They're telling them and giving them Ooh. demonic insight on how to do it according to Satan. That's insane. So a lot of these people that are palm readers and stuff like that. You got to understand these people have a prophetic gifting. They have a gift from God, but they're just using it for the wrong reasons. And so when you understand that you have dominion, that means that we have power. Mm. We have power. And a lot of people aren't walking in that power because they're being deceived by the devil, Oof. thinking you're not good enough. You cannot be a Christian if you're doing this and doing that. You're not this. You're not that. And thinking you're less than, less than, less than. That is his power. The devil's only power is deception. But Oof. he don't got real power. Oh, no. Don't be deceived. He doesn't have real power. The ones that have power is us. And if he can deceive you from actively walking in power, then he has taken dominion over you. Ooh. And that is like, you know what That's I mean? That's something crazy. to think about because how do I have dominion over you? But because of your lies, now I'm believing that I have no dominion. And you know what's crazy? He knows his time is up. He knows his time he is up. He knows his time is up. He's like, yo, let me deceive. Let me deceive. Because I know I'm going. That's the only thing fire. I can do. Is deceived. That's crazy. I'm That's an not amazing good. perspective. Yeah, like wow. it's like we have that power. And so the Bible says that, you know, we cannot walk in fear, for he has not given us a spirit of fear. So But a spirit of, of power. Power and a sound, and a sound mind. mind. You feel me? Like, this is literally in our word, bro. That's crazy. This is in our word. And so when we actively read that mm. and partake it. Meditate. Meditate. The Bible says that the word of God is, is, is the, the word of God is, uh, what is it? The bread of, what is it? Bread of life? Is the word of God? Let me find the the, the, the word of God is, is the bread for our souls? Bread of life. Not us. Just, <laughs> just chopping I, I got to find this, this because I really got to. No, you have to say it. Yeah, for sure. Because I really got to like digest it. But it's like the word of God is, bro, I always say this verse. <laughs> Basically, the word of, we can't live by bread alone. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I, I love, love you, Jesus. Jesus. We cannot live by bread alone, but by the word of God. By yes. every word that comes from the word of God. So, if we cannot live by bread alone, that means mm -hmm. that our bread, our daily bread. What is it? Is, what is daily bread? The word of God. Amen. Spiritually, how we feed ourselves is the word of God. Exactly. And so, we need the word of God to feed ourselves spiritually. And so, when we read the word of God and we feed ourselves spiritually and we read verses like that, mm -hmm. I have power, I have dominion. He has yeah. not given me the spirit of, uh, of fear, but of sound mind. When we read that and we, we digest remind ourselves. it, we remind ourselves like, hold on. Of truth. I know who I am. I know my worth in Christ. God created me different. I know my worth. Amen. And you get to receive that and really act it out. So now when you see demonic things in power and dominion, you can say that's demonic. That's from the devil. When somebody is being is, is, is manifesting, you're able to say not out of your own will, yes. but you're able to say, demon, get out in Jesus name. Amen. It's not it's not me doing it. It's the Holy Spirit in me. It's in Jesus name. So it's like he's giving me that power and dominion and they have to leave. They have to obey. Amen. They have to obey because we have that dominion. So just tap into that, you guys. Tap into that. Tap like, into that. Halloween is happening. Let's stand our ground. Let's fight from a place of victory. Hallelujah. And actually know it. Mm -hmm. Actually embody that. Mm -hmm. Okay? We have to know that we're fighting from a place of victory. And Amen. we are conquerors in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm just so incredibly thankful for you guys. Like, we love you. We're praying for you. We literally are so excited for you too. Like, I really Hallelujah. hope you guys are excited too. Are you Trust excited? me. We missed you. We missed y'all. And the Lord is moving. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But I'm yes, so excited. Just, just pray. Let's stay prayed up. Let's stay dwelling with the Holy Spirit because... Stay vigilant and aware. When y'all see this, okay, y'all going to have a whole different perspective on Halloween. We pray but that. We pray. We pray that. We pray that you do. And if you need more encouragement, go to the comments because the comments are always filled with encouragement. I, know, I love y'all. So, I love y'all feedback. Let us know what you guys think about the new setup. Set, um, yeah, let us know. Yeah, and we were thinking about like even doing, obviously not yet, but um, you know. Just to get your thoughts. Yeah, like, you know, doing BTS, you yeah. know, behind the scenes. Because a lot of things that we're doing like are so new to us. Like even you speaking on that panel, you know what I mean? Like leading up to it, like 
I will, you know, what do you guys think? Like, maybe we can bring maybe you guys like along. Maybe, like, a Heavenly Bond vlog? Like, yeah, like, Heavenly Bond vlogs, BTS, like, behind the scenes, like, yes. of what it is leading up to these moments. I think that would be really, really cool. See how we can stem from it. And, you know, we can encourage you guys to see what it is. Like, but these things, you know, we, we, it's not, we get nervous, like, oh, you know what I mean? To yeah, do certain things. For sure. It's not like we're bold all the time. You see us <laughs> preaching here all the time. Trust me, we Dang. get nervous. Those posters now. Listen, okay, you're right. <laughs> But, um, yeah, just to see how much we rely on the Holy Spirit to do these things. You know what I mean? It's really, really good. So, yeah. We love you guys. We cannot wait to see you guys on the it's next amazing. episode. Bye. So, dang. Why do you stop it, honey? We're doing. Stop it. You, oh. are you, are you, that oh, was mad quick. Like, oh. That was a little. So, yeah, guys, we love you. We hope you enjoyed <laughs> this video. <laughs> I thought the camera stopped. You was about to say bye to them a little too quick. We love you guys. Um, And, yeah, we see you in the next one. You know, You're happy little, now? Yeah, like okay. that's a little more smoother, a little smoother right, transition. Whatever.